Hi there, in this video we'll have an overview of sequential function chart programming. That's called SFC programming too. First, I will explain three basic languages briefly. Then, we'll write and test a simple program in SFC language. After that, I will explain three instructions of the program control group, which are related to SFC programming. Finally, we'll do a practical project related to automatic warehousing. My name is Syed Reza, and before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. If you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start, in this video, I will use my controller. Before explaining sequential instructions, let's have an overview of PLC programming languages. When a new routine is defining, its programming language can be changed. Until now, we have used ladder diagram. Another programming language is function block diagram, or FBD. Although this language is rarely used for an entire system, but sometimes, there's a need for complex instruction sequences, that may be laid out much easier in function blocks over ladder logic. For example, let's see how an add instruction can be implemented by the FBD language. Well, this instruction can add two values. I want to add a stored value on a tag like A, to a constant number like 25. Now let me store the result on a tag like B. Alright, this was a simple program in FBD language. Like the ladder diagram, here are instructions that can be used in FBD language. Now, let me create another subroutine with a different language. Here, I select the structured text. This programming language is text-based, compared to the graphics-based ladder diagram or function block diagram. In this language, I must write my program. For example, let me use a jump to subroutine instruction, in structured text language, to call the R1 subroutine. In this language, each instruction has a specified text or code. You can write them directly, or find the desired instruction, and insert its code to your program. Well, the ladder diagram, function block diagram, and structured text are three basic languages for PLC programming. Here is another language, sequential function chart or SFC, which uses these three languages. SFC is a graphical programming language, that displays the process flow as a diagram, thereby allowing the user to control the sequential processes, by describing the transition conditions, and actions for each step. Now, here is one step and its transition conditions. So, let me extend this program to three steps. As you see, from here, I can add steps and transitions to my program. At the end of the process, I can stop it with the stop instruction, or connect that to the first step, for processes that must be repeated. Note that, always one step must be determined as the initial step, and the type of other steps, will be normal automatically. So, if the controller executes this program, it will start from the first step. Well, I don't want to do any action inside the first step. Let me skip it. Then, I must determine its transition condition. It means when the controller must exit from the first step, and execute the next step. To have a simple program, let me use the first digital input address as the first transition condition. Well, if I activate the first digital input, this tag, tran underscore 000, 
will change to 1, and the controller will execute the second step. Now, let me define an action for the second step. Here, I can write its action in structured text language. It seems hard to write a program here. So, let's jump to another routine, using the JSR instruction. So, based on this program, when the controller is at the second step, the R1 subroutine will be executed. Note that, the referred subroutine can have any program in any language. Similarly, let's call another subroutine, when the controller is at the last step. Also, let me use the second and third digital input as the transition conditions, respectively for the second and third steps. Alright, this is simple program in SFC language with three steps and three transition conditions. It will be repeated, because I connect the last transition to the first step. This program has been written inside this routine, R3. So, let me call that from the main routine. Now, let me download and test my program. Let me change my controller mode to run mode. As you see, the controller is at the first step. If I activate the first digital input, it will go to the next step, and do its defined action. So, based on the program, the controller is executing the program, inside the R1 subroutine. Now, let me change the second digital input state to exit from the second step, and go to the third step. Note that, here. I mistakenly entered the address of the first digital input, instead of the third digital input. This address is also used, as the transition condition for the first step, so, when I activate the first digital input, the controller goes to the first step, and immediately goes to the second step. Alright, I hope you have learned how a sequential process, can be programmed using SFC language. Now. I can explain three instructions related to SFC programming, of the program control instructions. The first instruction is SFR, reset SFC, this instruction resets the execution of an SFC routine at a specified step. Well, the program inside this routine has three steps. So, I can change the step which is executing, with this program. The next instruction is pause SFC or SFP. This instruction can pause or restart an SFC routine. I will use this instruction for the next project. The third instruction is EOT, end of transition. This instruction returns a boolean state, its previous run condition, to an SFC instruction. It can be used to change a transition condition of an SFC routine. SFC programming language and related instructions can help us to control sequential processes, like the warehousing project. If you remember, in lesson 28, a simple program has been written to control the system manually. Now, I will use SFC language to fill racks automatically. First, let me change my controller mode to run mode, to test my controller program.
As you see, the crane gets boxes automatically, then find an empty rack position, and put boxes there. Note that, this process can be divided into some steps, which are repeated. This is my program, which has been written in 9 steps. As you see, each step is executed after its previous step. Now, let me explain this system, and also my program. Note that, we used this system in lesson number 28, but here are two important differences. First, I have modified the control box. Here are one digital display to display the founded empty rack number by the controller, and two push buttons to stop and restart my SFC program. The second point is using sensors in this project. Remember, we have used these actuators in lesson number 28. Each actuator has a sensor that can send the actuator state to my controller. This boolean tag will be 1, when the crane is changing its position. The controller can use these three tags, to detect the crane arm's positions, which are right side, middle, or left side. Now, the middle sensor is activated. Finally, this tag will be 1, if the crane is moving in the vertical direction. Let me test the last sensor. If I activate this actuator, this tag will be 1, during the crane moving. My controller will use these sensors, to detect the appropriate time, that must exit from a step, in my sequential program. Alright, this is my PLC program. It has a main routine, 9 subroutines which are called by this SFC type routine. The main routine calls this routine. Also, it uses start stop push buttons to execute and pause this routine. Here, I divide my sequential process, into 9 steps. Each step calls its related routine, and has a transition condition. The first step, call the first subroutine. Here, I move the crane to its default position and turn off all actuators. Then if the crane doesn't have any moving, and also the middle sensor is activated, this tag will be 1. I use that as the transition condition for the first step. The second step calls the second subroutine. It only opens the crane arms to the right side, until the related sensor is activated. The third step enables the emitter, to drop a box on the crane arms. Also, it enables a timer. After one second, the done bit of the timer, activates the fourth step. Step 4 disable emitter, reset the timer, and back crane arms to their default position. The controller will exit from this step, when the middle sensor is activated. At the next step, I define an array with 54 elements, respectively for 54 available positions inside racks. I use an FSC instruction, file search, and compare, to find an empty position. If it finds an empty position, then the founded position will appear on the digital display, the crane will go to the founded position, also this position will be saved on the related element of this array, and the controller lifts the crane upward, while it's moving to the founded position. The next step will be activated, when the crane starts moving. During this moving, only this bit related to the FSC instruction will be reset. Otherwise, it won't find another empty position for the next execution. When the crane reaches the founded position and stops its moving, the next step will open crane arms to the left side. The eighth step will be executed, if the left side sensor is activated. Now, the controller lifts the crane downward, and back crane arms to the middle position. Then, the controller moves the crane to its default position. Also, it will go to the first step, and repeat this sequential process, to get and put another box on racks. Alright, let test my program again. This is the array with 54 elements that have been used inside the FSC instruction. Some elements were filled by a non-zero number, and also I fill some elements manually. As you see, 
the first empty position on racks is element number 10, and after that element number 13. Now, let me press this push button to resume the process, and see the performance of my program. As you will see, the controller will detect empty positions successfully. The crane will go to position number 10, and after that, it will go to position number 13. My controller will continue the filling racks process until there aren't any empty racks. So, let me pause this process, using the second push button. Alright, until now, we have learned basic and also some advanced instructions of ArsLogix 5000 software. As you see, after the program control tab, there are other advanced instructions. Some of them are explained during this tutorial. Such as previous videos, you can learn others, using the help window. In the next videos, we will see how an HMI device, human machine interface, can connect to my controller, and help us to monitor and control an industrial process. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.